All right, guys, welcome back to Ozark Mountain Garage. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Help me grow this channel. I think I'm at about 38 subscribers. I'd love to hit 50 or 100 and keep it moving. So uh, anything you can do to help, I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, let me give you an update, show you where I'm at. On the 1940, um, <clears throat> yeah, I just got the, the roll cage primed. Just got to prime in it. Uh, next step is I'm going to come back in and uh, use some high temp paint to uh, paint the firewall there, just so that it protect it a little bit. I've got the front. I'll take you around to the front. Went ahead and primed the frame. I'm fixing to, like I say, I'm fixing to get back on the on this firewall and paint it with high temp paint. And then once that dries, I'll come back and shoot everything with the semi-gloss black but I went ahead and stopped uh, the priming right here where the S10 frame ends and uh, the front end that I added to it that I'm building. went ahead and stopped right there because I've got quite a bit left to do on the front end. I'm going to try to uh, uh, build a, a front end that slides out kind of like a drawer and then you know, can unhook it for this front end. It's, it's pretty heavy actually. It's all steel, original parts. But uh, anyway, that's that's my plan for the front end here. And uh, but yeah, let me take you around the rest of the car, show you how things are coming along. <coughs> so looking in the the inside here, uh, I've got my tunnel. Obviously, uh, you'll notice some plate here. This is quarter inch uh, flat bar that's six inches wide, as well as uh, right up in the front. So the reason I put this right here, I've got the drive shaft loop front and back drive shaft loop, <clears throat> but I seen where uh, Ozo, uh, not Ozo, uh, Fireball Camaro had a, a situation where his U-joints exploded on a run and went through the roof of the car, through the door of the car, and he could have gotten hurt. So uh, this, this plate right here at the end of this tunnel, uh, this plate right here squarely in front of me, that is basically a scatter shield for that U-joint where it's gonna, uh, you have your yoke that slides up into the transmission. You've got your U-joint right there. That's gonna, that's gonna protect that. And then what I did is I built a scatter shield for the uh, flex plate and converter. <clears throat> so it's permanent. And uh, yeah, I went ahead and primed it. Uh, I've got to see my angle down in here. I've, I got my seat mounts uh, uh, fabbed up. Uh, my my five-point harness um, uh, brackets in, um, got everything primed. So I'm I, I'm at the point to where I'm ready to start putting the floor pans in, and then I've got a bead roller and metal brake coming from Jags. <clears throat> They're behind on getting it to me. It's a little frustrating. It's been a couple of weeks, but uh, anyway, um, I still got other things I can do until it shows up. So, um, yeah, looking forward to getting the floor pans in. I've got the this back se section part of the roll cage. I really like the bends, how it came out with the back end. Uh, and I got it primed. That's part of the, that bumper is actually part of the roll cage. goes right up in here. Got it all primed. The back section and uh, my loop. But, uh, yeah, man, it's coming along. Uh, it's been a fun build. It's a... Uh, a lot of work. Uh, I knew it was going to be a lot of work, but you don't realize how long it takes until you start doing it, and every little thing gets done by you. By you, you know it's <clears throat> it's one thing when you got four or five people helping you, but yeah, when you're doing it all yourself, it does take a little more time. But you know what you got, and I'm happy with it. It's uh, it's coming along, man. It uh, got all my bars in there. Should be should be pretty stout. <clears throat> shouldn't be over heavy this is all chrome molly tube so except for the quarter inch plate that's you know i added probably 20 pounds right there at the back of the bell housing where the bell housing bolts up to the mid plate as well as probably another 15 pounds up top all all plate but that's thinner plate up top but uh yeah i just wanted to show you where i was at like i say i've got the the uh the uh brackets in for the floor pin and uh Ready to run some sheet metal. Next step, I'm going to go ahead and put some sheet metal in it. Once I get this firewall painted with the high temp uh, um, 
paints. I'm going to come back over the top of it and just use the the uh, Rust-Oleum satin black and coat it over the top. Hopefully it doesn't peel up on me. If it does, I can always re, re, uh, repaint it later. But uh, I wanted to go ahead and get this primed and painted prior to putting the sheet metal in because otherwise I won't be able to get to the, most of this stuff. I mean, you've got a lot of cross bracing and brackets going to the four link and the frame and it, it's just a lot going on. And this is the only time I can get to it. Uh, <clears throat> once that sheet metal goes in, I won't be able to get to the top side. So I've actually come in and painted it top and bottom the, to the best of my ability. And uh, yeah, that's where we're at, man. I'm gonna, tonight I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this uh, firewall painted with some of this uh, high heat. Um, I use on barbecue pits and stuff. Cause there will be some heat coming off that motor. <clears throat> got your area cut out where the where the steering wheel is going to come through and that little flap sticking out that metal flap that's actually where that uh, the electronics are going to possibly come through I'm looking at pos uh, at uh, some other options uh, because one of the reasons I, I want to keep all the wine uh, running down the middle and going straight to the back and have all my electronics in the back but <clears throat> these seats are I've got the seats sitting pretty far back so I could actually go on the passenger side over there. I'm, I'm thinking about going on the passenger side and uh, do it, um, installing my electronics on the passenger side over there possibly. And so I could close that flap off and, and uh, just run down the, the inside of that firewall and drop down <clears throat> into it. But uh, yeah, I'm concerned about fires. You know, I'm gonna run methanol. So I wanna be, you know, as safe as possible within reason. So I'd like to have everything sealed off. <clears throat> and that uh, that flap there in the center where I was gonna run the electronics, I wanna run the, uh, what is it, the T T6, T600, uh, oh, what's, uh, what's the brand name? FuelTech, uh, it's one plug and it runs everything on your motor. And, and uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, but I know, I'll, I'll, now it's going to run the, the dominator and everything or uh, whatever else I need in the back <clears throat> to keep it away from a, a potential fire. If it happens, I don't burn up my electronics. But I've got all this plated in. I think that <clears throat> I will have enough room to run most of my electronics right here in the front because, like I say, those seats are, are really far back, man. You've got, well, you've got uh, five foot maybe. Yeah, about five foot, uh, almost five foot <clears throat> from the where the back of the seat goes out to the front. So I could potentially run some electronics right in here, mount it on here. But um, again, I'm just going to think things through and take them one step at a time and go from there. But, uh, but yeah, man, I hope you like the update. Uh, again, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, on YouTube and uh, thank you so much for watching you guys have an awesome day